Hello and welcome to the Migration Mapper demo series. This is the first one of a series of a number of small short videos that I'm going to go through how to use Migration Mapper. So my name is Jared Merkel and I am an assistant professor at the University of Wyoming and a research associate with the Wyoming Migration Initiative. Migration Mapper was basically built to help us deal with thousands and thousands of GPS caller data sets and turn those into something useful for conservation and mapping. So this app is going to help you review your data, look for problems in your data. Then it's gonna help you identify important movements from your animals, identify important areas of use from your animals and create products that help you map important areas for these animals. And so let's just jump in here to orient you this is the main migration initiative, Migration Mapper website. And here you'll see basically most of the information that you need to get to um, Migration Mapper. And the way you can get to this site is basically Google Migration Mapper or even Migration Mapper Wyoming, and you'll find this site pretty quickly. And so on this site, there's a number of, a bit of information, an overview of the project, a bit of a timeline. And the main links that you want to look for are these. So the first one that's most useful is there's a migration mapper user guide. And in here, you're going to be generally working with migration mapper 3.0 or after. So you click that. And that's going to take you to a um, Google Doc user guide that um, is constantly being updated for the work that you're doing. So in here, there's a huge amount of information. Um, you can use this. Uh, table of contents to get you going here. A um, few things before we jump into there. If you have any bugs or if you have any questions or comments, there's a form to submit um, those type of inquiries. That'll come to me and a few of us, and we can respond if necessary. And then basically this user guide has a huge amount of information of how to get started with Migration Mapper and how to use it. And so I'll probably refer to this throughout this video series quite often. But the first thing you need to do before you get started with um, Migration Mapper is you have to download the most recent versions, download and install the most recent versions of R and RStudio. And so to do that, you basically want to Google R CRAN. There's a link in the user guide to go straight to this. Um, you go to this, the comprehensive R network. You're going to say download R for Windows, and then you're going to say install R for the first time. And now, one of the things you should consider doing before you install R is actually go to your computer and find your add remove programs. And you want to go in here and uninstall R and R Studio from your computer. So it's best to basically uninstall both of those programs, clean them out completely. And you'll see, you'll see here, um, if you scroll down, there's R for Windows 4.12. You wanna remove that, uninstall that, and you wanna uninstall RStudio. So do that first, that'll give you a clean slate on your computer. Then you can download R Windows for the first time. And if you click on this, you will get a, um, it'll download an exe file and you'll wanna double click on this, follow the instructions for installing R on your computer. Then what you wanna do is go to R Studio, Google R Studio, and you can click on this. You go into here and you're going to wanna to scroll down until you find the download button, um, wherever that is, products, R Studio, Go here, our Studio Desktop, and download our Studio Desktop. Choose your version. You will be able to download here. And now we have the latest version. Download our Studio for Windows. That will give you another EXE, and you want to follow instructions to install our Studio as well. So once you have those two things installed, um, you will be good to go. And the next thing we need to do is download Migration Mapper itself. So you'll want to go back to the Migration Mapper website. And now we're going to click on Download Migration Mapper. And here it'll ask you what version you want to download. I highly recommend downloading the latest version. 
download 3.0, you're going to get another table where you're going to put in some information. Click OK here. This is just a license that says you're not going to use the data or use the code and make money off of it. And that's it. Otherwise, you can use it for whatever you want. Submit this. And now you will come up with a screen here that says you can download Migration Mapper 3.0. So then you click that, it is going to start downloading a zip file on your computer. And one of the things you're going to realize, especially if you work for a government agency, is that to install R and R Studio and Migration Mapper, you will probably need administrative rights on your computer. So if you do not have those with your organization, you will need to ask your IT person to allow you to have those administrator um, abilities until I'll tell you in a little bit. Once you see the window uh, for Migration Mapper, the main screen, um, you can remove those administrator rights and move forward with using Migration Mapper. Okay, so what you get here is a zip file. The first thing is you want to make sure you double click on this and unzip it. This is very key. If you do not unzip this, um, you will definitely have some issues working with Migration Mapper. Okay, so here is the Migration Mapper folder. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this. And what I always do is go to my desktop or some main screen and I make a new folder. And I'll just call this um, map practice. And inside that folder, I will put migration mapper itself. And then I'll add a new folder for the data that I'm going to use. And then another folder for map project. So this is where the actual migration mapper project will go. So once you have this set up, I you know, there's many different setups that you may want to do. Um, you will want to um, kind of organize your folders so you have it unzipped and have your folders in the right, right way. And so we're going to be using some sample data from Migration Mapper. So there's a folder inside here called Sample Data. And I am going to grab this Mule Deer Platte Valley test data, make a copy of that, and put this in my data folder. And Migration Mapper always takes shape files. And so shape files are an ESRI format for spatial data. And you will need the minimum of four files related to that shape file and definitely needs the .shp file related to it. Okay, so now you have your data organized. You have an empty folder for your map project. Now it's time to actually run Migration Mapper. And so you should see this um, file down here and you should see an R thing right here, which means R Studio has already um, recognized this file as an R Studio file. If you don't see that R there, you actually want to open up R Studio itself and I'll show you in a second. You say open file and you want to navigate to this. But since I see the R thing here, I can just double click on this. And this opens up this map.r file and you'll see some code up here and you'll see the R um, kind of information here. You don't have to worry about anything here. What you do is you look for this run app section, click on that down arrow, make sure this says run external, which means it'll actually open up the app in your um, browser. And so once that's clicked for external, you can just click run app. And the first time you do this, you're going to see a whole bunch of new things um, downloaded and installed. This could take a few minutes, but once you see this screen, that means all packages have been downloaded, installed, and you are in good shape. And so just to orient you a little bit to finish off this video, um, Migration Mapper has six different kind of modules within it. The first is a data import preparation, two, and so this kind of helps you understand what your data look like, find any problems in your data. For instance, if the caller was still um, in a different state or on a helicopter or in a vehicle, you're gonna be able to find those points. Um, then module tools where you're gonna really dig into every animal ID or every animal year and look at their movements and see what's important within those movements and extract um, the sequences of importance. 
Then module three is exporting sequences, um, actually turning those sequences into strings of point data written out. Then module four is actually applying movement models like a Brownian bridge movement model or a continuous time movement model. And then once you do that to all your sequences, then module five, you're going to actually take all those sequences at the individual level. And there's a few options to kind of stack them up or merge them or unite them into a population level um, movement uh, corridor or high use area. And then the final thing is module six provides you some visualization and data outputs. Two other things on this um, web page is the user guide. This is a link to the user guide again, so you can get to that information that you need. And then if you have any uh, problems or bugs to report, there's a link to that Google form for that as well. Final thing I wanna mention is that uh, this is really a project in collaboration with Wyoming Migration Initiative, Gage Cardo Graphics, the Wyoming Cooperative Fish and Wildlife Research Unit with the USGS, the University of Wyoming, and WAFLA. So with that, that's the first video. Thank you very much.